So I am here with Skylar Burke stash on and his stash of sales knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> I want to start by saying that sincerely, Skylar might be the most fascinating person I've met in my entire life. I say that without exaggeration. He's just an endless fountain of amazing stories. So I wanted us to just start by talking about the transition that you've made right from B2C sales to B2B sales, since optimization, I believe, is kind of your first business to business sales gig, right? The most interesting thing that I didn't realize when you think about a transition from B2C to B2B sales in the SaaS world is anywhere where I achieved success in the past in B2C has just been through sheer volume, sheerly working harder than everyone. And just knowing that if I put out more volume, more metric and more activity than everyone else, that eventually it will yield more results in turn. In B2B, it doesn't actually work like that. You can't just, I don't want to say spam, but you can't just go volume based approach. You can't just say you're going to outwork everyone by just like doing more activity than everyone else. You have to actually be strategic about it. You have to actually build relationships and you actually actually deliver value. Why do you think it's harder in B2B? Because like, I'm honestly, as somebody that hasn't really done marketing on the B2C side, I'm shocked to just know that enough spamming people with enough persistence actually pays off at the end. Why do you think it works there and doesn't work in business? Well, think about it this way. Think about what you buy for yourself on a daily basis, a daily, a weekly, a monthly basis. Chipotle. You bought Chipotle. Okay. How'd you come to the decision to buy Chipotle? You buy Chipotle often? Sometimes. My brother works at a Chipotle, so I'm loyal to them, I guess. Okay. Think about like your purchasing decisions yeah. though. You probably get a bunch of random marketing campaigns. You're probably driven by a bunch of different things. Recommendations from people often. It's like, what did my friends say? What did my family say? Where have I shopped before? If my husband wants to go shopping somewhere, we'll go shopping there. Like we went to Uniqlo last night. Right. Yeah. Now, you're a founder, you own a company. Mm -hmm. Think about how you make purchasing decisions for your company. Think about outreach that you get on a day-to-day -day basis and how you resonate with that outreach when you think about it for your company, as opposed to thinking about your individual purchasing decisions you make. It's a lot different, right? Yeah, because the price tags are bigger. There's more stakeholders that have to actually you know, be responsible to other people for what I'm doing. Also tax write-offs, right? I mean, I need to know that it's a legitimate purchase that I can write off at the end of the year or not. I have to think about that. Also, I think it's just harder to understand what people are selling, right? Business solutions are so much fancier. So here's kind of a reframe is like, when I worked for FanDuel, for example, I was selling gambling essentially to people who gamble sports gambling to sports gamblers. And if I get a list of a thousand qualified people from my marketing department, from my analytics department, these are all people that are already active on the site. They already, to some extent, like sports betting, like sports, and may or may not be interested in the offer. So if I call 100, 200 in a day, naturally, if I'm at least somewhat competent and good at my job, it's really just a volume based activity of I'm going to reach a certain amount of people, a certain amount of people are going to answer the phone, a certain amount of people are going to be interested and a certain amount of people are going to resonate with the offer. And it's just literally just a numbers game at that mm. point. So how do you stand out if it's just a numbers game, just hustle harder or you just hustle harder. We had a we had a leaderboard and it would say at the end of the day, the amount of calls that everyone's made, the amount of revenue that everyone's generated. And we do all kinds of challenges, you know, whoever made the most calls, whoever got the most deposits, whoever made the most sales in a day, they'd get free drinks, they'd get free lunches, they'd get shout outs, whatever it is. And so my mentality was just never be number two. If anyone gets anywhere near you, <laughs> just work harder, just make more calls. Like what made a good salesperson work versus a bad one if they spent the same amount of time? Mm, well, I think it's your ability to ask hard questions. What's a hard question? Well, the hardest question is to ask people for money. You go through discovery, you ask your good questions. Maybe you uncover a good deal of pain, whether this is, you know, a gambling related sale or whether it's selling insurance marketing to insurance agents and marketing solutions. Yeah. 
You could do the best job in the world on discovery. You could uncover a ton of pain. You could get them so motivated that they want to make a change. But what do you still have to do at the end of the day? You still ask have to them ask them for money. So you have to be a little shameless. Totally, but it's not shameless because a recent reframe by Noah Kagan, I love you, you're awesome, um, was if you truly believe in your product, in your solution that you're selling that you either own or that you work for, it would be morally wrong of you to not ask. Because if you know that it can help them, how are you ever gonna motivate them to change if you don't ask? I like that. That does, that that makes it seem a little less, like a lot less sleazy actually. Mm -hmm. Huh. All right. So now that you're in B2B, what are the kinds of skills that you think from what you've seen that it takes to become better? Like, what are you working on? Uh, a lot of things, a lot of things. Um, I am trying so hard to get better at prospecting. I didn't realize how hard it is in B2B. In B2C or in any other sales role I've ever worked, I just thought it was a numbers game. The number of calls, the number of connects, the number of accounts, qualified accounts that you reached out to. It was like, if I've done enough split testing and I know that my copy is good, I can get to the point where I know if I send out 100 emails, 100 LinkedIn messages, 100 cold calls, how many meetings I should be able to book from that. And in B2B and with our products, very, very specific. Mm -hmm. It's just not that simple. You have to be so much more personalized, so much more customized, and so much more tactical with your outreach and your approach. So how, what does prospecting mean? Good prospecting for B2B? Well, if you know, I'd love to know because <laughs> I am certainly not there. Okay, how do you know that it's not good enough? Uh, well, you know how many meetings I've booked on my own in the last two months for my own outreach? It's zero. It's really bad, Maria. <laughs> how, how do you maintain your confidence? Well, here's the thing. Mm -hmm. I know that if I get somebody on a call that's a qualified buyer in our target market, the odds of them closing are as high as they've ever been for this company. We're doing great and we're closing good deals. It's just that I can't find a way to self-sustain enough pipeline to believe that I know that I have the coverage in the back of my mind to consistently hit my number. On the flip side, we just closed the most amount of deals we've ever closed in a month and generated all-time revenue. It's amazing. Just off of the few calls that either came from our cold email agency or came inbound. So you know that as long as you can get somebody on a call, you're gonna do well. Just, exactly. Now we're trying to figure out the whole getting people on a call. You know how on TV they would do these things where they would be like, if you match this characteristic, like call the number on the bottom of the screen now. Oh my God. Yes, so yes I do. I would like you to look at the camera and put out a call for the perfect prospects that you're looking for. Describe them so they know themselves. And I'm gonna put Skylar's email and his Calendly or his uh, Savvy Cal links at the bottom of the screen rolling as if we're in a TV show. So, okay. limited time offer. So, limited time offer to talk to me. You can be the first meeting I've ever booked. Come on. That would be pretty cool. Very cool. If you are someone who Maybe your workspace right now has become a little bit of a dumping ground for meeting notes, links, outdated documents that you can't trust anymore. And with that, you're dealing with some kind of issue as it relates to knowledge, project, task, or information management. Call the number. <laughs> Call it now. Limited time offer. Only Reach out the to the email. Two to four months. <laughs> <laughs> or however long this LinkedIn post might get views. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Call now and you get a bonus. Uh, they get to speak to the best Notion consultancy, the biggest Notion consultancy, and the coolest Notion consultancy on planet Earth. And you might get a shout out in one of our next videos.